Okay, so before we move on with our application and start using MongoDB, there was one other thing about testing that I wanted to cover up very quickly, and that is there are going to be times when unit testing a particular third party package could be very, very difficult. And we are going to see an example of that in MongoDB itself. And in, in, in fact, uh, MongoDB is not that test friendly. As far as I've come to learn that many of its functions are actually very hard to test, unit test. And we are going to see an example of that. Although in terms of integration testing, it is totally fine, but unit testing could be a bit of a problem. You could still do it and you could stretch it out, but it, it's going to make your code bloated and there's, it's still going to be harmful in some way. We'll just see an example of that. Okay, so uh, let me get back to the code. Okay, so I have in, in the previous code, in the previous session, we had an interface collection API. It had got one method, insert one. And in our main function, we had uh, this insert data. It used to accept the interface as an argument. I would, I can pass the Mongo collection or I can pass the mock collection. And based on that, it would call the actual insert one method or a fake insert one method. So I've got the fake mock, the mock collection here and the mock insert one method here. Okay, so based on what I pass to, to this method as a collection is the one that gets used in fact. All right, and based on that, I also had a unit test here. So when I execute it, uh, it used to work just fine. All right, uh, I, I went ahead and added one other thing to it, and that was we didn't check for inserted ID. So C here is actually the insert one result, and it's got a field inserted ID, which accepts uh, interface, a, an empty interface. So I just added some string value, and I'm just when I get back the result, I'm, I'm just printing ABCD here. Okay, and I'm, I'm just making sure I'm asserting that what I receive back as part of the response here using my mock collection is the same as ABCD because then this got passed here. Okay, and uh, the mock collection was passed here. It called this insert one method. Okay, this insert one method which returns ABCD. So what you got here was ABCD, the response within ABCD as inserted ID, and that's what it returned to me, and that's what I was uh, asserting here. All the standard stuff, right? Nothing fancy. Now I've gone ahead and added some stuff to my file to explain the second scenario. So let me just uh, do that. All right. So yeah. Okay, so I've got some code here right now. So I've gone ahead and added uh, the find method as well. So find method accepts context, it accepts filter, and it uh, sends me the cursor. So if you remember from our uh, operator session on MongoDB, so cursor is the one that has this next method or all method using which we can actually loop through a list of documents that this method sends us back and we can then actually process them. So cursor at a point points to one particular document, but it also maintains a cursor on all the other documents. So when you you can look through it and uh, when you look through it, it keeps moving from one document to another in the list in an order. And then that's how you get a set of documents back. But uh, now let's see if we can actually see the example in action, all right? So before that, we need to have some data in the database. I had some data, but let me just start with a clean slate. Uh, let me delete this database again so that we can start with a clean slate, slate right now. Okay, so let me go ahead. Okay, let me go ahead and execute this uh, go main function. Now, what is it doing? Well, uh, we had this code before where it was calling insert data. Okay, where I'm inserting user object with Kronal and Shrimpy as fields, but now, I am also calling find data method, which is supposed to give me back the list of uh, documents that are there. So it's gonna give me a slice of documents, right? So in this case, it's gonna be the slice of users. Uh, let's check this method out. So 
it's doing nothing so I'm gonna run, the, run through this very quickly okay so it accepts just like this insert data method it accepts collection API I don't need any other argument because I don't need to add something I, I'm just searching something right uh, so that is all right now and uh, I'm calling the collection find method the filter here is a blank filter because I want all the documents I don't have any filtering uh, criteria right now and then what I get back is is a cursor okay and I, I call the all method on it or I can call the next method there are two ways to do that but right now I have an empty user slice slice here and I'm calling the all method and passing it the pointer of slice what it's gonna do it's gonna populate these users with a set of users with their pop fields populated in this case it's just gonna be one user that I'll be creating just in a moment in the database okay and then it sends me the list of users from the database okay so that's what I print here when I get back from this method so when I call this method now so I'm just gonna call main.go alright so uh, the first is from this thing here okay inserted and the second thing is this cursor output. I just wanted to print uh, this uh, cursor object here. I think I'm getting, uh, yeah, I think I'm printing it in the method. And I'll explain to you why I'm printing it in just a moment. And then I am actually printing the list of users. So it's a slice. You can see the square brackets. And then it's got this user object back to the database. It's got this so products collection it's got the user all fine and dandy so far right and if you run through the same pattern now to uh, to mock this fine data I need to pass it the mock collection all right so that is that is fine okay uh, okay sorry I have to repeat again so I think we're not mocking fine data we are mocking actually find method okay so find method is this and we need to mock this so in order to mock this now we actually need to implement it as a method of mock collection just like we did with insert one all right uh, the problem is if you look at uh, the insert one we were actually able to use insert one result fairly comfortably it was very simple it just had one field insert id and it just had it was a blank interface we could you know stuff any value in it but let's look at the cursor struct right now so well if you look at it it's got this current field that is exported because C is capital here it is BSON raw so it seems like if I have to actually send it back as a mock value uh, there's a bit of a well uh, there's, there's a bit of work here all right and I, I don't even know exactly how this is used because if you look at it it's got the other private fields right what if this private fields in some way or the other influence what the current value is? And I, I have no control over these fields because I can't even mock them because they are not exported. It's, it's, it's in the MongoDB driver's code, right? And if, if you scroll down, uh, I get this ID field and then I get this next ID, try next, all these methods and there are some private methods as well. Now I don't know what they are doing and I, it's not my job to find out what I wanted to do I just want to use this library it's I, I don't want to learn it right I, I that's that's not that defies the whole purpose of how you know making use of the other library okay so what I want to do here is I want to mock this find method and I just want to return a mock cursor so let, let's try doing that okay so that's what I've done here Okay, so as part of mocking this find method, I'm declaring a Mongo cursor, a pointer to it, an empty Mongo cursor struct and a pointer to it in C. And I knew that I just, we just saw, we just saw that, that it's got this current field and it, it's actually based on row type, okay? So at least it appears to me that maybe current one is the one that is holding the slice of data that is coming from the database somehow. So what I'm doing here is uh, uh, Bison row is actually of uh, byte. So if you look at this, so Bison row actually the underlying type is a slice of byte. Okay. So I'm first of all defining a slice of byte, and the slice of byte is is of this JSON document. So the JSON document is a first name, last name. All right, and uh, 
and I'm, I'm actually uh, type asserting it to Bison row here okay so because it's uh, its underlying type is byte so this conversion this assertion is possible and then I'm returning it back to the user without any errors all right so now I have a test method here so that's a find test method I create a mock, mock collection call find data with mock call so it is when uh, the mock call will come here in main.go at this point the collection is actually my mock collection and it's gonna call this mock find method this mock find method is right here and it's gonna return this thing here all right uh, and when I call this then uh, I, I get a list of users I assert that the error is nil and I look through the list of users I get the user back and I want to equate that uh, the user's name is Kronal, the first name, right? So that's what I want to assert. When I run this test case, actually it fails. And this is uh, this is something that you'll uh, come across in some third-party libraries. So usually, especially when you are dealing with a concrete type, in this case cursor, and it's also the pointer that's when you you don't know what's happening I mean it's it's basically uh, the method and the internal works of that method we just saw an example of that that it's got some private methods and the private fields and we don't know how their magic works okay and now we can actually we have an option that we can actually try digging deeper into it and try to mock exactly what they are doing into our mock function but that's just too much of work you know that's just too much of work and that's not our responsibility we, we don't want to do that and that's also harmful sometimes it's gonna give you falsy notations and that that's hard to catch and sometimes when the third-party library gets an update gets a patch and it, they change some the, some of this code then your test actually are just completely out of sync with them right so that that's not a desirable thing and that's what I'm saying that's what I get to say that you don't need to mock the objects that you don't own so this cursor object is the one that you don't own okay now there's a way you can do that I mean uh, also that's not a sure short way and you'll eventually run into trouble that is you can uh, just like what we did with collection API you can come up with a mock cursor object and you can have that cursor object implement all the methods that are there to be invoked on the cursor uh, uh, cursor struct so all, all these are methods on it and maybe you can implement the all method but then exactly what does all do if you if you look at the all it actually is doing the unmarshalling and decoding here right so uh, what I get back as cursor then I actually call all method on it and I pass it the pointer of users now this kind of operations are very very hard to mock and you shouldn't be mocking them and there's no sure short way of actually getting them right all the time and that is why I, I've come to learn that a lot of the methods in uh, a lot of the functions and methods in MongoDB driver are not that test friendly and in our application I'm not going to do unit testing for them uh, we'll be doing the integration testing but uh, this is also an important point for you to understand that something that you don't own you shouldn't be mocking it you don't have to mock it and there is a lot of debate in you know many uh, if, if you ask the experts or if you ask anywhere on stake overflow or any kind of online forums you'll find conflicting views here but you'll still understand that there's some uh, common ground being achieved there and it is that uh, you don't have to unit test things when it makes your code a harmful because you don't know the implementation well and it's, it's not your responsibility of how the third-party object that you don't own does its own implementation B uh, it's gonna make your code very bloated and uh, you're gonna spend a lot more time on just writing unit test and that's gonna be a technical debt as well and 
this these points are important to consider if you have to write in the test and C is uh, integration test if they are easy to achieve you should also go for that today MongoDB is a kind of database uh, unlike many other databases for example in the olden times Oracle used to be the database MongoDB is unlike those enterprise gigantic, gigantic databases can run in a container so when you are setting up your CI CD pipeline for example on GitLab or any kind of uh, another tool for example Bitbucket that you have a facility to run your pipeline and have this MongoDB service being available during the execution lifecycle of your pipeline for you to connect to and write documents to and do your integration testing it gets destroyed when your pipeline has run successfully or failed because of some reason so containers are very easily disposable and mongodb can run in container and that is why we are going to be using uh, integration test with mongodb it's going to make our life more easy it's going to give us more confidence that our tests are doing what they're supposed to be doing right and it's it's also going to make sure that we are able to execute all of our execution paths so that was uh, my intention for this particular session and uh, now we'll start actually exploring uh, how we can start over our application and write it again afresh but this time using mongodb so all our methods post get put delete will now work on mongodb uh, having learned the mongodb uh, unit testing and the operators and how it works i think this time it's going to be a very quick thing uh, we already and uh, you know learned a lot about eco framework so i think we won't be spending much time there so i think uh, that was it from this session and i'll see you in the next session